What's up guys, welcome back to another video of It Will Plays. Today we're going to be playing, oh, I'm excited for this, today we're going to be playing The Elementalists. It's the school dance. <laughs> ah, it's going to be awesome. I asked my love interest to listen for, to the dance, which was uh, Shreya in this book. Um, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like something's going to go wrong when we, reach, when we reach the end of the book. I don't know, it's either something wrong, something bad, same thing, but you know what I mean. With that being said, let's dive in. As the year comes to a close, dance the night away at the Emorial... Uh, Emorial... Emorial... De Gala. I don't know what that wor word was. It's time to dance the night away. I'm not singing. Sorry. Chapter 16. That's a Morilla. Ah. Yeah. Several weeks after the championship game, you drift awake, your eyes fluttering open just long enough to catch the warm sunlight streaming in, and your blanket is ripped away. What? Rise and shine. You have 10 minutes to get ready before we go shopping. I need to buy need to buy a new dress before the Amorial Amoriala that Amoriala uh, I don't know how to say this. The day gala. I'm coming along for the laughs and to prevent you from being murdered in broad daylight. Is isn't it dangerous for you to be to be out in public? Don't worry. I'll stay out of sight. Shreya beams at you, but you can't help feeling a little flick, flicker of unease. Can't wait for tonight. The gala is just what we need after everything we've been through this year. Oh yes, I can't wait. F yes, can't wait. I need to forget all that nasty fight for your life nonsense and party all my worries away. Now I'll leave you to get ready. Chop, chop. All right. All right, girl. Jeez. Rhea leaves your room, putting, pulling Atlas with her. And you turn to your closet to pick your outfit for the day. Okay. Let's see. What outfit do I wait? Let's pick casual. Hmm. What's this one? No. 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 So my pajamas. Huh. Maybe this one. I know I passed this one. So. Let's get back to the story. Anthony, hurry up. Shopping is a first come, first serve activity. Coming. You join Shreya and Atlas to make your way to Penn Square. No. No. There we go. Penn Square is busier than ever before. Lively festival music mingles with the shouts of street vendors selling flower garlands. I wonder what I'm going to wear for the gala, for this, for the dance. Shreya darts through the crowd, heading for Oster's shop. You follow her in. Shreya, Anthony, happiest of memory. Morelia, Morelia, Morelia. Yes, Morelia days to you. Morelia days. Morelia, got it. 
But who is this look lookalike friend of yours? I'm uh, Atlas, Anthony's twin. Oh, I myself have have, have several siblings, saplings, but I had no idea you had a twin, Anthony. Yeah, it's kind of a long story. You quickly give Asa a rundown of how Atlas came to Prendergast and swear he and swear her to secrecy. But we're not here to give you the, you the Anthony Daly to just can't. We're here to shop for the school gala. Naturally, I've prepared a selection in anticipation of your visit. Okay. You fall. I, wa I want to wear a wizard hat. You follow Oster to the back, and with a wave of her hand, she summons several clothing racks. Shreya immediately begins riff rifling through the clothes and frigid, frigidening efficiency. Too glittery. To Scaly, to Merlin, E. Aha! Now we're talking. Here, Anthony, try these on. They're perfect for the Amorial. The Amorel. Ah, I had it! Amorili. Amorila. 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 Amor. Amor. Amorlia. Amorlia. Right. The Amorlia Day Parade. Day Gallop. Amorlia. Amorlia. Shreya shoves a bundle of clothes at you and you step into the dressing room. Oh. Uh, what, what are my other options? Red Velvet? Hmm. I see a watch there. No, let's see the other one. Okay, no, I am not wearing pink. <laughs> <laughs> I look like 007. <laughs> Bond. James Bond. Ugh. <laughs> um. uh. A nerd in this one. This is the one. <sighs> when you step out of the dressing room, Oscar lets out a squeak of delight. Oh, you look simply divine. Hey, not bad. It's pretty decent. Decent? Psh, Anthony is stunning. An absolute shoe in for best dressed, if I do say so myself. And with that vote of confidence, I'll take it. Your outfit needs just a one final touch. Drea places a shiny circlet of golden amarilla amar, amarilla leaves on your head. You feel a shiver of magic. Oh, your hair looks so different in the most wonderful way. I love it. It magically transforms your hair into the perfect gala look. Yes, an Amorlia headpiece is tradition for one's intruity celebration. This is a must for your very first Amorlia day. How about it? Uh um uh, I look like a white boy. You're looking fine. I know an Amarilla headpiece would complete your look. It's like I'm royalty, and my kingdom is the dance floor. 
Oster, I think I've got everything I need for the gala. You return to the dressing room to change into your regular clothes while Shreya you know, drives back into the clothing racks. When you join Oster up front, she sighs wistfully, a small smile on her face. I hope you'll visit and tell me everything about the gala later. I can imagine it will be wonderful. Does your school not hold dances like this? If only. The closest thing we have are probably the ceremonial forest dances. And those are dull. So dull. The grand trees aren't exactly known for enjoying a sick bass drop, as you humans say. Actually, you should come with, come to the gala with all of us. Can I? I didn't realize it was open to public. It, it's not, but I'm sure Shreya can swing an invite for you, right, Shreya? Oster, darling, of course, you, of course, you can come to the Omar, Omar Leah dance. Your day gal. I keep saying the wrong thing. Look, if I can't get. In, an invite for one wood nymph to a school dance that my name isn't Trey a mystery. Are you in? Yes, very much so. Then consider it done. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find the perfect dress for the perfect woman. And, and I can't wait to see that dress. Oster, her laughs, her smile brilliant, the, the leaves. In her flutter, in her hair flutter excitedly. It's like a dream. Like a dream. I'm going to the Amorlia de Gala. But what about your twin, Atlas? Will you be attending, attending the gala as well? No, fancy galas. No, the fancy galas aren't my scene. Atlas shakes his head dismissively, but there's something about the defeated slump on his shoulders that makes you go over to him. Hey Atlas, are you sure you don't want to go? Maybe we can sneak you in or something. Look, I appreciate the offer and maybe maybe I do want to spend some night pretending I'm a normal pedagogy student who can hang out and party just live. But if but if I went, we might as well present our heads on a silver platter to our enemies. I can't risk letting it myself be seen. Your gaze wanders, and you notice an, or, an ornate mask on the shelf. Its gold detailing catches the light when you pick it up. Whoa, cool. What if we disguise you? If you wore a mask, you could be anyone. Yes, certainly could, particularly with a mask of distory, distortion. Oster hurries over to you with a wooden case in hand with all, with our, within our several sets of what look like industrial contact lenses. The mask of distortion is glamoured so that people instantly forget the wearer or the moment they look away. But if you were this matching set of distortion lenses, you're immune to its magic. Atlas, you can wear this mask to the gala so nobody notices you, and we'll all wear the this is so we can hang this is so we can hang out with you. I don't know. What if it doesn't work? It is it has a one hundred percent guarantee of identity protection, and as the attunes say, you only live once. Atlas glances over at you, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. That does sound like a foolproof way to get me into the dance. Get the mass of distortion to bring Atlas. Hmm. He's going to the dance. I want to see this mask out. Consider me your fairy god twin. You will go to the ball, Cinder Atlas. <laughs> as long as you promise not promise 
As long as you promise to never call me Cinder Atlas ever again. No promises. You place the mask into his hands. The moment Atlas puts the mask on, it shimmers and disappears. Atlas turns away. Wait, who was I talking to? You try to remember just what you were doing in this corner of the shop. Then Atlas takes out the mask and your memory comes back floating. Wow, you weren't lying. This thing really does work. Like I said, 100% guaranteed identity protection. The mask comes with six elementary lenses. Enough for the rest of us. Thanks, Anthony. I'll find a way to repay you. You light punch Atlas. He breaks into a grin. Don't mention it. Just then, Shreya emerges from among the clothing wreath, dress in hand. She drops a, pu a pouch of coins on the counter. Hello, mortals. Your goddess has found her garb. Now let's get back to the dorm. I need at least five hours to prepare for this gala. I don't know what, I don't know what she's going to dress up as. That evening, you get ready in your room. You pause in front of the mirror. Alex, fantastic. The gala can't handle all of this. You pop in the complimentary contact lenses just as Atlas walks in wearing the mask of distortion. How's this? One for, for a trained assassin on, on his night off. I think that's because I am one. Okay, but now you're a fancy... I guess. So, I'm gonna head to the gala first, just to scope out the scene. Find a comfy shout out to Lurkrun. I expect nothing less to see you, see you there. You go back to pre prepping for the gala. Moments later, you hear someone knock on the door. Is it Shreya? Shreya? The one and only love. Shreya sweeps in, her presence lighting up the room. She stops in front of you and strikes a pose. Surprise, do you love my dress? Let me see. Oh, she looks... <laughs> Rather see you. If you catch my drift. I'm not sure I do. Care to clarify? You tug Shreya close, running your hand down the small wall of her back as you kiss her neck. She shivers as you whisper in her ear. Maybe later. Maybe? You know, I only have time for people who follow through. Don't worry. I fully plan on following through. Shreya steps back in you an expressing look. I'm so glad you went to... Th I think you went with what I picked out for you. Or am I to decline the status and services of the Shreya mystery? You're smart, Anthony. I like that about you. For once, I may not be the best dressed in the room. Shreya links arms with you as, you, as she presses a quick kiss to your cheek. Shall we head out? Our pumpkin carriage is waiting to take us to the ball. Seriously? No, silly. You would never catch me riding in, in a gourd. Or how gush would that be? You follow Shreya out the door as she, re as she regales you with her tales of magical dis transportation. Whoa! When you arrive at the gala, Shreya expertly navigates the crowded hall with you in tow. You marvel at the umbrellas floating overhead, the water swirling under your feet, and the fountains erupting in the time of the mu with the music. This looks fantastic! Floating umbrellas? 
choices went out of their way of doing this. Wait, is that Professor Kantos DJing? How charming. I'd heard rumors that his talent for music extended beyond the pan flute. I guess he's a he's a satire of many talents. As you scan the sea of people at the gala, you spot your friends hurrying over. There you are, pen pals. Assemble. Pen pals, assemble! Soon you're surrounded by your friends, all chatting and laughing in their excitement. You, Their voices mingle with, you know, with the gala music. Hey, Anthony. Having fun? Alice shrugs, but the but small smile tugs at the corner of his mouth. Sure, it's super cool. I don't hate it. High praise from you, you ask. Nerf races ahead to the, to the main dance floor, beckoning for your group to follow. I've been waiting weeks, waiting for weeks to show you all this move. I learned it from a mermaid. What? Zeb launches into a full body wave, complete with a shoulder shim. Hm. I give that 2 out of 10. Oh, come on. That was worth at least 7. Sorry, but that's a, but I didn't see it, so it's a 1 out of 10 for me. Zeph, I can't let you see the show. Watch what I learned from the Paris club scene. Some of all your friends are showing off their moons. And a handstand? It's pretty easy if you've got the core strength. I have something we all can, and we can all do. It's popular among us wood nibs. Alistair demonstrates a slow, graceful dance rem reminiscent of trees swaying in the wind. You mimic her moves. It's like dance meditation. It does seem to have emotionally stabilizing properties. I give it an 8 out of 10. What? No fair. Why did I get a 2? Because yours sucked. Atlas whispers to you. We could do better than all of, than all of these fools. Really? You think so? We just have to sync up. Follow my lead. Atlas launches into a complete Complicated dance sequence moving perfectly on beat. A new challenger approaches. Atlas beckons you to join in, matching him move move for move. You throw up your hands, drop your knees, and slide across to the floor. And for the epic finish, you hold out your hands, offering a foothold to Atlas. He steps into the bridge of your hands and back lifts through the air. Oh my god. Woo! Alice lands beside you and you strike a pose, pointing at the bobbing umbrellas overhead. Guys, we know who's the best for the best. That was amazing. It was like seeing a bird in flight. So what's your rating, Beckith? Uh, I suppose... Hmm. I should award you a 10 out of 10 for lack of better entries in this, this impromptu prompt to dance competition. It's called a dance-off, Becketh, but yeah, agree, 10 out of 10. Hashtag twinning! <laughs> As if I'd settle for anything less sweet, less than sweet victory. Alice, you are, you and I are unstoppable. Later, you all leave the dance floor to the to explore the gala. Oscar wanders over to where some students soar overhead with the flowing umbrellas. What a fantastic! What a fascinating mode of flight! It's like it's like that like that fame attuned Mary Poppins. Man, I gotta try that. Begeth heads toward the side of the room where students toss coins in into the fountains. Hmm, perhaps I found a use for my spare 
change. Griffin st strides and strides toward the towering cake on the other side of the room. It isn't a party if you don't eat yourself in a food coma into a food coma. I hear Chef Li Yai Lian Feng himself bake that cake, which means I must try a slice. Mm, what to do? You join Oster and Zepp among the, among a crowd of students spectating as a f as a few brave students leap for the umbrellas, grab a hold handles, and go soaring. Have you seen anything so magical? I was skeptical at first since I heard that opening an umbrella indoors is considered bad luck among the attuned. But Zephyr reassured me that these umbrellas have been charmed to ward off any danger. It's 100% safe and 100% awesome. I'm gonna go grab one. Zeph ducks through the crowd, headed for the umbrellas. With that moment, you hear a shout. I'm on top of the world! Zeph clutches a blue umbrella that swoops by overhead, sitting off a breeze that ruffles your hair. Guys, check this out! He swings his legs, gaining momentum, and then lets go of the umbrella. Zeph. Yeah! Oh no, you humans are all so fragile. I hope he hasn't broken every bone in his body. Scan the crowd looking up for Zeph. He pops back perfectly fine. He waves to you and Oster. What are you guys waiting for? This is the best! Wanna give it a go, Oster? I do, wouldn't it? But wouldn't it usually stay rooted to the ground? I don't know if I can handle flying like that. Would it help if we went together? Yes, I think so. Two branches are better than one, after all. I'll let you choose which umbrella we should take. Hmm. I'll take the. You look after as she dies, leaves shaking, green. Here we go. You take hold of the um, of the yellow umbrella. <coughs> Excuse me. Where she dips briefly under your weight, then starts drifting you and Oster up to the ceiling. Sitting your high above the gala, a shifting canopy of colors beneath you. This must be how Perigen and Falcons feel when they ride, therm ride the thermals. Hey, I can see Griffin and Shreya. Look, they're so tiny. You wave to your friends who, who gape at you from down below. So peaceful moments, the umbrella gently floats back down. That was amazing. We're going again, right? Please say yes. Um, yeah, this time you pick the umbrellas. You and Oster just ride several more umbrellas until Oster has tired herself out and goes to get some snacks. You look around the gala. You make your way to the fountains along the side of the room. Dean, Dean stands is off to the side, her mouth a thin line of disapproval. Hmm. He's up to Becketh in the crowd. <laughs> ah, there you are. As you can see, everyone here is making wishes. It's a common enough practice. Oh. That's what's going on. But do these people do that too? I imagine so. But things go... But this goes a little further. What do you mean? It could produce a coin and sends it flipping to the air. 
he lands on the foot of the Helden with a splash. The coin flashes lighting up the water before fading back to a normal. It's said that the brighter the coin shines, the more likely your wish is to come true. Here, you try it. Beckett offers you a copper coin with a dragon's head on it. He's in quiet, power and fame, perfect grades. Hmm. Peace and quiet. You send the coin sailing into the air, it lands in the wire and stays dim. If anything, the coin grows darker. Uh, maybe it didn't work? Well, I would take this, this with a grain of salt. This isn't an exact magic. No prophetic, prophetic art is ever, ever is. Kinda sounds like the weather channel. Here, I love another quarter. I've got more, more wishes to try. What, what is this? A shakedown? Why must I fund your experiment? Consider it a redistribution sort of wealth, Mr. Moneybags. Very well. Mind you, I'm only going along with this for research purposes. That's what everyone says. Yep. Do it for the science. Now give me. Sighing, Beckett hands you several more coins and you have fun making wish after wish until you decide to move on. You cut across the dance floor to the snack table. Chef Leon, Leon Fang is St. Monter's rival in the cult trees world, by the way. And some have say his parmart. So basically this cake is sorry, is very fancy. It sounds sure sounds like it. Did you try a slice yet? I was just about to. Griffin slides off a piece of cake off a piece from the blue tier of the cake. He takes a bite. Uh, that wasn't me. Series of musical welches issues forth. He claps a hand over his mouth. I did warn you. The Fang family is known for their magical dan danta cakes. Cakes. Anthony, you try. You have. You have to try a slice, but choose your tier wisely. There are three flavors. Here's each with different effects. You eye the massive cake before you, notice this, noticing a sign that labels the tier flavors as blueberry, a strawberry, blueberry, and lemon. Hmm, let's try blueberry. But that's not all. Where, where in the cake do you want to take? take a slice from? Look over the different slices of cake. Hmm. The center, of course. You, t you take a silver cake, silver of cake, and lift a fork full into your mouth. It's tart with a subtle hint of blueberry. Mmm. Ribbit. Then only a series of loud croaks escape your mouth. Whoa there. Ribbit. Ribbit. Your voice returns to the normal when you've polished off your cake. My turn. Fred selects a slice of strawberry cake. She takes a bite and the soft glow involves in her hand. She opens it, revealing delicate pink blossoms. That's beautiful. Just like her, she's beautiful. Much like me, I really... Yeah, that's what I just said. I really must call up Fang and get his recipe. I'm going to try a slice. Wish me luck. Everyone heads to the other side of the table. When his back is turned, Trey gives you a mischievous grin. Ify, you got a little frosting on your face. Oh, where? Trey leans in, her gaze meeting yours, and licks the corner of your mouth. Got it. Oh, uh, 
Thanks. After enjoying some more cake, you, you look around none at the other party activities. You wander the gala by yourself for a while longer, taking everything in. Hey. You jump as Alice suddenly appears by your side. Where'd you come from? Around. I just wanted to say thanks, you know, for getting to for getting me this mask so I could become tonight. It's nice getting to feel normal like this. It's fun beating the same fool that snaps over and over just for because he keeps forgetting he just lost to me. <sighs> Atlas, you're an evil genius. You know it. But yeah, seriously, thank you, Anthony. I'm starting to see why parties get their reputation. They're fun. I'm so glad you're liking it. If anyone deserves to have fun, it's you, Atlas. I, I know, right? But anyway, enough of the cinemas and stuff. I've got two tiers of fancy cake I haven't tried. Catch you later. You lay out Atlas and you know, disappears back into the crowd. When Shreya suddenly joins you, taking their arm and giving you a twirl. Whoa, hey there, Shreya. Anthony, just the good-looking and charming son attuned I wanted to see. It's time to fulfill your duties as my gala date. Dance with me. Oh, okay. The music shifts to something slow and sweet. The two of you begin to sway your hands. Hands on her, your hands on her waist. This is lovely. Why don't we dance together more often? I think we're too busy with school and fighting shadow monsters. You know, normal life stuff. Uh, excuse me. Ah, yes. Things are never dull with you around, are they? You know, when we first met, I thought helping you was this f was this helping you was this fun adventure. I didn't take it seriously. Yeah, I could tell. Of course, it ended up being the exact opposite of a silly lark, and so not my style. And yet, I was all in. Lucky me, I don't think I would have made it this far without you. Oh, of course, there is no way, there's no way he would have survived without me. Shreya tosses her hair and you laugh. But seriously, I'm so glad we ended up roommates. It was clearly meant to be. We were clearly, we were clearly meant to be. Just then a drizzle starts up and sh with shifting rays of light cutting through the rain, Shreya starts laughing in delight. Isn't this wonderful? It's all so beautiful. Through the light of light and the rain, you're, dra you're drawn to Shreya's smile, to the curve of her lips, and the fall of her hair. Yeah, beautiful. Shreya, you lean in and kiss her when you pull back she's pouts. That's it. You'll have to do better than, than that. Oh, I'm just getting warmed up. Then let me help you. Shreya cups your face, pressing her lips into yours in a long, searing kiss that you feel all through your body. That's how you do it. Got it. As the song ends, Shreya leans in close, her voice light and playful. Anthony, we should slip out of here for a while. Have some time with just the two of us. Are you not so subtly trying to get me alone? Rhea leans even closer to speak into your ear, her breath making you shiver. I am, I am, and I'm utterly ashamed. I think we could have even more f fun off the dance floor. What do you say, shall we?
Yeah, things are heating up. <laughs> <coughs> you offer your arm to Shreya, grinning at her. Let's get out of here. Giving you a coy smile, Shreya takes your arm and leads you away. With the doors closed behind you, the Yala music is only distant stream. Oh, this is so much better. Don't get me wrong, I live for Gala's but You wanted it to be just the two of us alone together. Shreya tugs you close to her, grinning wickedly. Yes, catch on quick. So I've got a question for you. How am I doing as a date? Well, on the scale of 1 to 10, uh oh, 100. Okay, I know I'm awesome, but don't you think that score is a little too high even for me? Not at all. I know exactly what I'm about. I'm a world-class expert on galas, on gala dates. I've attended galas with pop stars, business moguls, moguls, and even princesses on my arm. And you seriously think I'm better than them? Absolutely, you're my favorite by far. Ever since that night we spent together after the championship game, I can't get enough of you. Shreya winks at you, heat floods your face at the memory. Anyway, enough chit chat. I brought you here for one reason and one reason alone. Right. You want to do cartwheels in the hallway? Certainly not. That would destroy my look. You start to laugh at her shocked expression. You tease. Don't scare me like that. Sorry, Shreya. Let me make it up to you. You press a soft kiss to Shrey as if she makes a noise of protest as you pull away. That's not nearly enough. Shrey draws you into a passionate kiss, pushing you back against the wall. You savor the feeling of Shrey's lips on her yours, the sweet scent of her hair, the warmth of her body. When you break apart, Shrey's breathing is ragged, she bites her lip, as she looks you over. Tell me what you... Oh! <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. Okay, I'm guessing this is the part where I stay quiet. Here we go. But in the middle of the hallway, couldn't somebody just walk in at the time? Oh, I don't know. Three, two, one. Shh! What was that? That'll be one of the sentries going on patrol. Ah! I thought it was something else. Grinning impishly, Freya leans, leans in to nip at your ear. She speaks in a soft, seductive voice. Why don't we give them a show? Wait, what? 
Wait, are you serious? She raises an eyebrow. Who can say? Come along. I suppose Ooh, we must get back to the gala. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> the teachers will be like, um, come, Anthony and Shreya, please come to my office. And then later, so, can you explain this? Well, you see, it was the heat at the moment, and I don't do Star with me. <laughs> oh, man. Shreya takes your hand, and together the two of you return to the dining hall. Ah. As evening turns to night, you and Shreya head back across the gala hand in hand. Psst, Anthony, over here. You glance around and spot Zeph waving from behind a curtain. Your other friends surround him. Zeph, why in the world are you hiding? Stealth is key to this operation, my friend. We're going to pull off an incredible prank. Is that what this is about? We're going to bring a little extra magic and fun to this shindig. Zeph reaches into his pocket and produces a trance and slick shimmer, shimmering bar of something. Is that soap? Not just any soap, my friend. It's Lady Macbeth's passion sud suds master. When, when this hits water, it's going to bubble like crazy. Nobody's business and, well, you see. That's not ominous at all. I like where Zeph, I like where you're going with this, Zeph. Beck, Beckett's at his station, keeping an eye on everything. He said he, he was, he said he was down for, and I quote, a minor case of shenanigans. But for this to work, I'm going to need you to, need you, I'm going to need you to help distract the other students and professors, Anthony. This sounds like a job for Anthony Bond. <laughs> Could have wear the James Bond outfit. <laughs> I think pen pals are more than a than a, than up for the task. So how about it? Is everyone in? Yes, I can't believe I get to experience my very first attuned prank. Prank the gala for some magical fun. This is your chance to hang out with all your friends together at the mouth of the You know, I'm not so sure about this. I don't really want to stir up trouble at the gala. Sorry, man, but I'm out. Have you seen Dean Kiev? I don't think she'd be thrilled if we pranked the gala. Seriously, Dean, Dean, can go if, if she'd get a hot stone massage. She looks so tense. Zev glances over at Dean Kirsten and grimaces. You're right, better not test our academic overlords. Good thing they had to cancel it out, because I do not want to see that. Well, that frees up more time. Time for cake and drinks. I'll be right back. Zeph disappears into the crowd, whistling a cherry tune. He's going to try to prank Solo, isn't he? Try that prank Solo, isn't he? Knowing Zeph, nothing could stop him. A while later, the gala doors open and Professor Swan slips in. And she makes a beeline for the four wall. I'd better go talk to her. Professor Swan breaks into a tense smile when she spots you heading over. Anthony, it's good to see you. That's good to see you that you're all in one piece. <laughs> Get it? One piece. At least for the time being. Rest assured that I'm trying my best to find out who was behind the missing boards in the Hall of Mirrors. Mrs. Swan shakes her head, her bruff. I just don't understand how it could have happened. Yeah, about that. So I found out Beckett was the one who took down the mirrors boards. What? How? If he's a threat, I'll have to do something. I mean, whoa, 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 no, it's not like that. Beckett took down the ward so he could practice advanced magic, that's all. He said he wanted to be a good friend and help protect me. You're saying Beckett dismantled the boards? Beckett didn't mean to. He didn't realize how risky it was. It was a mistake, but at least there was a, no permanent harm done. 
Yes, it's all in the past now, but Beckett shouldn't have been able to remove the, the gas wars at all. Only faculty have the skills required. Anthony? Shreya bursts through the crowd. She stops in front of you, panting. Sorry to interrupt. I need it. I need Anthony for something. It's incredibly urgent. What's going on? Shreya drags you away. When the two of you are alone, she turns to you. Have you seen Zeph? No, I thought you went to get drinks. Yeah, like half an hour ago. It, it could be, it could be nothing. But it's been a little too long, and none of us can find him. You and Shreya rejoin Griffin, Beckett, and Oster. Shreya shrieks, shakes her head at them. So you haven't seen Zef any either. Perhaps he stepped outside for some air. Or he could have eaten too much cake and is sick in the bathroom right now. No, he must be somewhere in the building. I tried branching, but the trees haven't seen him outside. You look around at your friend's just face. You take a deep breath, staying your own nerves. I'm sure everything's fine, but we might as well ch go out go check outside. To lead the way, heading for the exit, Atlas joins you, adjusting his mask. I did a circuit for of the gala. Zeph isn't anywhere in here. Where did he disappear to? As the gala doors swing shut behind you, Aster stops short. No. Oster, what is it? You follow her gaze and spot faint flecks of blood marrying the floor. A few paces away, a small blood of blood has started to dry. Alice crouches beside the puddle and picks up something. Oh no. It's Zeph's bracelet, which makes this Zeph's blood. He must have left the bracelet behind so we could track it. When I find out who hurt him, Shreya cracks her knuckles, tiny tongues of flame sparking from her hands. We have to find him, wherever he is, and we must hurry. Judging by the blood, we can't afford to waste a second. Atlas, hand me the bracelet. The locator spell should su suffice. Atlas gives Zaf's bracelet to Bekiv, who casts the spell. He's this way. He better not be killed, I swear. You and your friends follow the trio, running as fast as you can. As you race through one of the hall one hallway after another, you fight down a growing sense of dread. Zef, please be okay. You skid around the corner only to find yourself in front of the hall of mirrors. The door is slightly ajar and a few droplets of blood trail inside. You burst in to see Zef struggling in Dean. Go as script. Anthony, don't. Quiet. Wait a minute. Why? Why is she choking him? Dean Giff waves her hand at Zeph's mouth, clamps shut, muffling his his shouts. Blood trickles down his cheek. Zeph, just hang in there. I'll figure something out. You edge forward as you try to think of something. Anything to distract the Dean. Not another step. Dean Gov throws out a hand and the ground rumbles beneath your feet, sending you sprawling. Oof. Griffin and Shreya help you back up while the rest of your friends surround you. We have to end this before anyone else gets hurt. Are you sure? Because I'd really like to hurt the Dean right about now. Right there with you. Dean Goff, you're the Dean. What on earth would induce you to harm a student? If a nymph elder harmed a sapling like this, they'd, they'd be permanently uprooted from the forest. Believe me, Harrington, I don't enjoy this. I had hoped that weakening the mirror wards enough for you to take them down would sell things, but... That was you? You're the one who made it possible for me to put Anthony and my friends in so much danger? We're all... we're all a part of this now. You're working for Rife, aren't you? He then. Dean, Gr Dean Goeth grimaces a flicker of something dark and terrible crossing her face. Her grip tightens on Zeph. 
This is a necessary evil. With that, Dean returns and shoves Zeph through the mirrors, leans, then leaps in after him. Zeph, no! So, the Dean, our principal, was the traitor. What the heck? The Dean was the traitor? The whole time. And, it, and I thought some of our friends was, and I thought, and Atlas thought one of our friends was the traitor. It was the Dean. The Dean the whole time. Wow. Plot twist. Wow. Well, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, go hit that notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.